What's up gamers? Hope everyone's having a good day. Welcome to another tier list video. I love doing these and all that because I get to yap. Anywho, uh, this is going to be best decks post Rota, Rage of the Abyss. We had two YCSs recently, Cancun and Niagara Falls, right? And a couple regional spread throughout between then. And so, of course, with all this new information coming out, we get to go look over Oh, what kind of what kind of decks we looking at here, right? So, I got a few things to go over first and foremost. Four tiers this time. Cream of the crop, very good. Okay, and rogue. Uh, just because your deck is not in certain spots doesn't mean it can win it. Doesn't mean it's not bad. In theory, the deck can win it all depending on the pilots and all that. Uh, of course, right. So theoretically, right, you're. Lantian deck, right? Dust it off, right? Could theoretically win the next YCS, right? Depending on how well you do, uh, depending on how well the deck performs versus each other's, uh, you know, it, the, just because it's in one tier doesn't mean it can, can't beat the ones above it. it. It might have a poor matchup, but in theory, it could, right? Uh, second, uh, the one up top, the three dictators is what I'm going to call it. Uh, Molcharmi, Fuerlas, Perulia, and Dimensional Shifter. These, these bad boys, whew, These bad boys are probably going to be the ones that dictate how well your deck performs into each of these three specifically. There is one other card, the one big one from, uh, which the best Dominus Impulse. I didn't include it in here because some decks kind of can't really play it, right? So I, I don't want to include that. But I probably it'd probably be like the co-star next to these three stars, right? So first and foremost, we're getting Tempi right there. So obviously Tempi Blind Second Deck runs 18, 19 Hand Traps, Whale Board Breakers, right? Uh, they don't, they lost one prosperity. They still got one staying or something, so it's harder for them to do their own thing. But they, this deck can still OTK you if they open at least one dragon, one of the dragons, and there's many board breakers. It, it's it's hard. It's it's pretty much you pretty much get you pretty much just got sacked that game. It's just over for you. Tempo is still a fantastic deck. Of course, we still don't really have that one true good pilot. Uh, there, it's someone out there, but. Tempai is still doing its thing, just OTKing through practically everything, right? Um, deck is still fantastic. Um, uh, Snake Eyes, the has Amita cards, gives Snake Eyes stuff, right? Flambridge didn't get banned. Yeah, you got one Ash, you got one Poplar, but now you got more spaces. Now you got space for the Azamina stuff, right? Uh, the more Fire King stuff, um... The deck is still resilient, still puts through multiple points of layered interaction. It's insane, it's crazy. The deck is insane. We're it's another year of snake eyes, right? We're gonna be stuck with this for god knows how long. But the deck is still the deck is still fantastic. Uh, Mimic Ghouls, so TCG exclusive. Everyone's hoping that the second wave of support was great. It's not at, it wasn't Ash level good. It was Gold Pride level good. Meaning the deck is playable and has a successful game plan now. All the new Mim level one Mimic Ghouls can get themselves our extra bodies. The two new Xyz gives them a new uh, gives them new removal or OTK potential. Uh, it's fantastic. Just one problem. Just one little problem. I mentioned earlier, Dominus Impulse. So your Mimic Ghouls obviously. Give they sub themselves to your opponent's field when they flip face up, it is a activated effect. Now, all the mimic goals are earth. Dominus Impulse locks you out of earth effects, meaning the, your mimic goals are dead on arrival when the moment they get flipped up. Other than that, though, the deck is fantastic. Still, I, I love the deck, great, it's, it's great. Um, now, uh, the, its new game plan is fantastic. The, uh, it turns off a lot of cards. I I, I love it. The Miggle is great. It's, we got another banger with Arcta. Good job, Konami. We're proud. Um, next up, I got U Bell. Obviously, with Fuel Ross, it's whew, the deck goes through multiple 
uh, cards through the extra deck, right? Resulting five, six, maybe seven cards, right? You don't want to give your opponent plus seven cards if they drop the floor loss on you, right? However, however, a lot of players, a lot of people really are opting out of hand traps in fours of board breakers. Because if you are make your opponent go first, right, they got a Molchar, they got both Molcharmies and like a starter, right? These two cards are immediately dead the moment they activate a card. The moment they summon, say, Moye or something, right? These cards need no cards. So, what people are doing, main deck and board breakers. Dark Ruler, Droplet, Evenly, right? You know, Duster Lightning Storms, Dark Holes. Everyone's main deck and board breakers, and after that... Right? You can just go combo off. But the deck is still fantastic. Uh, the Dark Beckoning Beast in... Uh, not the Beckoning Beast. Uh, Spear Gates hit isn't, isn't the worst thing. They still got Phantom, right? Uh, Spirits... They still got three Spirit. They still got three Phantom. Deck is fantastic still. Uh, still great. It sucks if... It, it would get real sucks if you get hit by a full Ross. But other than that, deck is still good. Ah, uh, Fire Kings, you bad boys got Okanics finally. Isn't it funny that it came out of Master Duel before everything else? Jokes aside, uh, Okanics is a excellent starter for the deck. Uh, it gives you more access to rank eights. Uh, it helps getting out. Uh, what's it? High King Grunix, the one that board wipes everything, as a backup option. Um. Uh, the deck obviously, you know, plays with the Snake Eye stuff, right? But Pure Fire Kings, you do got other supplementary engines like the Tri Brigades and all that. Uh, still great. It's fantastic. Um, deck is great. You know, doesn't do doesn't do too many summons from the extra deck. Has decent amount of layered interactions uh, with um, uh, what's the quick place spell called? Oh God! But uh, Kieran, obviously, you still got Kieran. Um, Garunix is still a great card because you're just gonna get you're just gonna get as much card advantage throughout Garunix. Oh God, what what's the field? I I literally forgot what the quick play is called. Not Circle, Skyburn. It's Skyburn. Skyburn's fantastic. Uh, it helps you just get advantage off of it. I like it. Fucking players, you're eating, doing great. Uh. Ritual Beast, I'll probably put you here. The reason I put you here because Ritual Beast is a shifter deck. And because of that, they kind of auto win most games if depending if they get shift, they have shifter. Besides that, they have a excellent gameplay loop with Altakana Hawk, of course, right? Generating you a lot of card advantage. Um... The new Link 4 uh, kind of just destroys Yubel because Fancy Yubel must tribute itself in order to activate its change effect, right? But the Link 4 says, nah, we're not tributing, we're not tributing there. Um, uh, they have a Rank 4 access to Inferno Flame Banshee, into Flag, into Protoss. It has a Protoss line, it's fantastic. However, all the decks above it just does a lot more than it. it the deck kind of has to get to Ultakana Hawk and there are some lines where it's just like mm, it's not that's not the best but I I still like the deck it's still great it's still good uh Centurion it's yeah it's Centurion it, it is probably the best deck that plays under these two because at most, you're giving them one draw from uh, Furoros, and you're might not even giving them another draw from Perulia. This deck also plays extre like, this deck plays extremely well as a control control uh, control strategy. Uh, you know, you get Furoros. Well, guess what? You're giving them one draw because you just summon Auxilla, right? You have the field spell up. You got two of them in the back row. Next turn, you get to do your plays after that. Yeah, you know King Calamity, but it's I think the deck is better off with King Calamity. You know, just run more Beast Jewels. You, uh, run the Beast Jewel version. That, that, that version is really good. Uh, you can run more Bull Breakers, Hand Traps. The deck is fantastic. Like, it is fantastic under these two. And sometimes Shifter too, because 
Auxilla gets you one of your banished Centurions. It's fantastic. Uh, I would leave it here. I, the, the tier, the the tiers also, by the way, are not ordered, but I'm I'm just gonna leave them like this. Um, Chimera, Chimera's pretty good. Um, uh, still loses to like a lot of hand traps in, in the meta we're in right now. Being hand trap heavy, Chimera is kind of just like oh, but it's still very good because it, you get like two draws max off of Fluoros. Uh, doesn't play well on the shifter though, unfortunately. That's really bad, but. Just pray they don't have it, right? Uh, it's still very good. And then, of course, they do have the OTK with the bigger Chimera. Still, it's fantastic. I like it. It's just... It's it's just... On its own, it's not as strong as something like Brandy, where having a supplement engine to it is just... Uh, a supplement engine to it uh, helps out the deck much more, right? And speaking of Brandon, I think Brandon's pretty good right now, not gonna lie. Um deck didn't lose sanctifier right so but they only got one brand of fusion that's fine you got multiple ways to fuse in this deck that's not branded fusion quem um branded in red uh oh god one of the uh traps right it's multiple multiple ways to fuse in this deck so you losing branded fusion sucks but you still got sanctifier right you're still gonna lock them somehow you know, you're, you're running Super Polys. Deck is fans still great. Still great. Um, of course, I just hate getting Puppet Lock, though. But I think the deck is fantastic right now. Uh, it, it has pretty good matchups, especially against Tenpai. If you're running Super Poly, right? Tenpai, what you can do when they summon Pydra and then get... Uh, and they have Chandra. When we go to Battle Face, at the start, you can just flip Super Poly Mick Garura. They can't really do much after that, right? Uh, next up, I got Memento. I think Memento is pretty good right now. Now, Memento does not have a game plan under Shifter. However, under Full Ross and Perulia, it's two draws max. The There's two versions, really. You have the Fiendsmith one, which... Without Lacrima, um, Fiends with uh, the Memento stuff loses a monster negation. I don't care about that because I personally think Pier is probably the better choice. Um, Pier, it's a lot like there are the pros and cons with the Fiendsmith and Pier versions, but I think Pier has the slightly edges it out. Pier has very, very good points of interaction, uh, creation, uh, create the big creation dude the 5k monstrosity that dude really good um uh the level 9 fusion creation king i believe is fantastic as well uh uh thunder uh it's a memento fusion right you don't have to use make the memento fusions you can always make something like a garden chimera of course right gives it gives your deck a lot more variety of like what you can do off of the mementos just popping cards right it sucks that if you get shifted because you kind of want them in the grave if they get banished it's that's it you know but with the deck the deck still performs extremely well under these two cards here so i i think i think it's it's still it's in not in set necessarily in a prime position to like win it all but it's it will definitely get tops right um, I got Voices Voice up and okay here. Uh, deck is fantastic still. Um, the branded version where you would just make it like Jalgen and stuff, I don't care about that. But on its own, this deck really doesn't do... Like, this deck does not care about Full Ross, right? It's it, it has a lot of, like, good stuff to where it did it doesn't really need to uh, worry about it, right? Uh... You have a searchable targeting negation in Cerevis. Uh, Skull Guardian is fantastic boss monster as an Omni uh, and as a beat stick going to 4100, I believe. Uh, both the continuous spells protecting your stuff is great. Um, being able to ritual summon about two, three times a turn. Uh, being able to use light dragon rituals, so things like... Um, uh, Odd Eyes Pendulum Graph Dragon, it's fantastic. The deck is fantastic, it, right? But it's compared to everything else, it's 
you can't really compete with the because if it's like if it's like go to a Ubel match, right, right. Sure, you make a good board, right, but Skullgarden destroys and stuff. So you know, Skullgarden pops the spear to Ubel or whatever, whatever, right. You get just regular Ubel. They still got Phantom uh, Nightmare Pain. They're just gonna beat over the uh, Skullgarden. And you're gonna take forty one to the face. It's gonna hurt. It's gonna suck. But that's just how the play. That's just how players do it. Some you might be able to scrape a win. Um, the extra deck is also extremely good in this. Uh, lots of the just like flexible spots. Like the only mainstays besides like SP, um, Chaos Angels, fantastic. Uh, low and I believe Trius Hariakria. I believe I don't remember how to say it correctly, but low Trius. Um, that's ten stars right there. Diviner can also make a. Um, can also uh, do some funny shenanigans by making an ancient fairy dragon, right? Because low would send a herald, right? Get whatever you need. Uh, the de this deck has a lot of flexible spots in it, and I, that's why I like it a lot. I think it, but I actually would put up very good here with the rest of these guys. Uh, runic stuff. Ugh, I'm so sorry. Um, any runic combo variant, sprite, fur hire. You know, those it's gonna lose a lot against these guys right here. You're gonna be going through a lot of runic uh, extra deck monsters. So, for example, like runic sprite, you usually go through three, four, five, uh, four or five roughly. Uh, you know, you go through a Hugin, um, Hugin, Spring, Gigantic, you know, you can make an I I IP mask, all that kind of stuff. That's a lot of draws you're gonna give to your opponent. I would not risk doing that, especially if you're also under Perulia, because all the sprites don't summon themselves. Uh, that starts a chain. They don't. They just summon it, but just phew, you know, um, it sucks. But I do think like comp, like certain runic builds, like the white force runic ones. I think those are probably better because it's more rely on just. Uh, you're gonna rely more on your runic spells just carrying on the back instead of just like oh yeah I got 80 points of layered interaction through my monsters because I did uh, all the runic spells are like instant fusions and all that right so I think I think I think these aren't doing good also it sucks real bad if any of your runic spells get banished right um, I got labyrinth labyrinth's pretty good because labyrinth doesn't really care about these two. And I guess Shifter too, because they they can get different dimension ground, I believe it's called, right? Uh Labyrinth's still pretty good. It's just that everyone's running a lot of board breakers these days. Lightning Storm, Dusters, Cosmics, right? So it kinda sucks that you know, you you set four and you got a Ariana on field, right? Your opponent dusters you and it's like, well, that's it, right? I still think it's good because the labyrinth doesn't really care about these two. I I genuinely think these these are the ones that they don't care about because being backed up by uh, lovely and her um, con uh, continuous effect or where your opponent can't respond to your traps. It's fantastic still. Lady's still a fantastic card, getting you any normal trap. That's great. Now, fortunately, I got the the rough ones. So. Uh, we did get new Atlantia Mermel support. My main concern, I like it, really like it. They just kind of slop the two together to make the make us another water pile. Problem with that though, they're gonna go through. They they uh, woo. Uh, a lot of the Atlantean and Mermel stuff do not work on the shifter because they have to be specifically sent to the graveyard. Um, they go through a decent amount of their extra, uh, at least going through the new Xyz, uh, the Link 3, um, I believe there's a Link 2 Mermail, I believe as well, they go through, and Coral Anemone, a lot, a lot of stuff, so that's a lot of draws, this one doesn't really matter, but Shifter, oof, it's rough, and there's also a lot, of, I do think that this deck is, is going to perform much better here and over say I guess the OCG because here we do have totally awesome well the OCG doesn't you can thank Sprite for that um, same deal with the sharks we got new sharks new sharks I love me sharks however same problems with this 
right? They're going through a lot of this stuff, and it's just, mm, you hate to see it, right? Uh, I, I put down Teardrop as a representative for plants. The deal with plants is that it will do well, extremely well, because there's one person grinding up plants because they know the deck better than everyone in the world combined times seven. This this deck has the highest ceiling, highest ceiling, but also is the one of the hardest to learn because there's so many intricate combo routes to go through depending on the hand. There's about four different engines in this deck that you have to know what works well together, uh, what goes into what, etc. The reason why I think it's rogue, because there's only usually there's usually one person playing plants, right? And shout out to the one person playing plants because God bless you. You're doing God's work. You are a saint for going this far with plants. Uh, I will also put Melodious down here. I, I do think Melodious is good. Um, they do got they are one of the few decks that can run uh, Herald of Orange Light because we do got three Herald now. It's just they don't have one of the better, better, stronger end boards, of course. Things like Appaloosa. A lot of these decks lose Appaloosa, right? And then you start to see the cracks in uh, within the fold. So, it sucks. But I do think this is a really good deck still. It's just, it can't compete with the bigger ones up here. Uh, Rescue Ace. It's kind of like here and there. Both of them. Yeah. Setting 4 still great. You know, OSS is still great. The Diabella stuff, stuff is great in it. Right. But compared to everything else here, there isn't much that Rescue Case can do as well. Uh, I got Exodia. Shout out to Exodia, to the person I made top 32. I forgot his name, but you did gr great job. Um, Exodia, all the Millennium. I guess it's just the Millennium deck, but all the pieces are fine. Um, it, the deck, uh, getting hard of the blue eyes and Rhoda, fantastic. That is Millennium Ankh 4, 5, and 6. The deck revolves around Ankh, of course, right? You know, you could summon the Millennium Monsters, but you gotta pay two stacks. And of course, with things like games and time, it's rough. But I still think his deck is good. Uh, the Unstoppable, Unstoppable and Exodia Incarnate, still a fantastic boss monster too. I like him. Um, a deck gets a board has a board wipe. Um, yeah, Reggie Temple is a very good field spell for it too. I, I like I like the deck. I like the deck, but I don't like it enough to where I think it could beat the ones up here. Right? It could in theory could, but like on paper, I don't think it can. But that's what I think. I threw Engraver in here because. I guess they're trying to make Beansmith its own deck. Let's be here. Uh, this is what I think, of course. Um, you are fearful to criticize me, ridicule me, call me a goddamn idiot for this list. Doesn't matter. This is what I personally think, though, of what the deck, uh, what the big boys are going through. Uh, if I had to think next deck, I'll probably win. It'd probably be Snake Eyes, right? Because the uh, new Fire King, right, with Volcanics. Uh, they has Amina stuff, of course, running it as an engine to give the deck an Omni Negate. A recurring Omni Negate, I believe. Uh, deck is still great. You know, Tenpai's going to OTK through everything. Zeturion plays extremely well under these three. Um, Bell's still good, but, you know, hard loses to that. And I get Shifter, but if you run Eternal Favorite, it doesn't matter too much. Uh, but... Yeah, this is what I think. You feel free, feel free to call me an idiot in the comments, whatever you'd like. Anywho, thank you all for watching. Listen to me. Yep, I will see you guys next time.